slow and he pushes the yoke forward. And that starts it. I know that because I can time in control column position to the same second. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to look, I'm only going to do this once, so you will not have time to watch everything. Do not try to watch the wind field vector. Don't try to watch control column position. Don't try to watch EPR. I will tell you right now, if you were watching EPR, you would see that the pilots got full power on these engines. You will also see that subsequently, the auto throttles will retard the power, in this case due to a high speed cue. Don't let that happen. Up and off until you're done with them. What I want you to watch on this run is the body angles of the airplane and these two things, AOA and airspeed. I hope at this point you will agree with me. Airspeed is energy. And AOA is lift. And we're going to watch energy and lift play out in this scenario. On the energy indicator, we have the V-ref for the airplane right here, and then 10 knot increments. Right now, he's about plus 15. On the lift indicator over here, we have an analog angle of attack in indication, and uh, that bar right there is stick shaker alpha, what we know as CL max, okay? And then 24 under the 25, that would be stall alpha or flow separation. By the way, is this interesting to you? The flight data recorder has an analog angle of attack indicator. And further, the NTSB says that one of the channels on our airplanes must be angle of attack indication. Because after all, when we go to investigate an accident, how can we possibly tell what happened if we can't see angle of attack? <laughs> Think about that. Isn't that interesting? All corporate jets fly with it. Now all military aircraft fly with it. And we can't see it. Clearly. We have some tools, but we can't see it clearly. Now let me tell you something, the NTSB is with us. They are recommending they should be in all airplanes. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do then is watch energy and lift play out, okay? And at the end of this scenario, I'm going to ask you, did, these, did this crew extract anywhere near all of the energy or all of the lift in this scenario? Here we go. Plus 25, he's doing real good. Yes, sir, everybody around the corner, we'll hit number one. Major one, six, six, contact. Yeah, you're going to lose it all of a sudden. One, there six, it is. Come on. Push it up. Push it way up. Way up. Way up. Way up. Way up. That's it. Black and six, Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to freeze this here at 50 feet. I'm going to ask you two questions. Is there any energy in this airplane? Is there any lift left on this wing? You know, there is no harm, no foul on this crew. There really isn't. I mean, do you see how purely fast this happens to them? You see how quick that happened? If you're trying to fly by some conventional cross-check and a conventional means with no one clearly identifying to you how fast the ground is coming, rest their souls, I'd be there too. But if one pilot were purely focused on extracting all the lift out of this wing and the other were purely focused on how he's doing relative to the ground, our non-engineering study shows that this plane would have never come below 500 feet AGL.
If you should encounter a microburst on departure or on approach, it may require...